Our next assignment is a digital painting assignment. It's a pretty straightforward assignment where you are going to paint either an animal from head to toe on just a blank background or a portrait from the shoulders up. And it can be very realistic, it can be very stylized, it can be a caricature. You get to decide if you want it to look airbrushed and smooth or if you want it to look like palette brushed and gestural. There are just lots and lots of different ways to approach it. But it all starts much like any project would start in digital art with sketching and thinking about how are you going to compose this? What is the subject matter you want to do a painting of? And here are some past student examples. So this student painted a parrot from head to toe. This student painted Woody Allen in a stylized, almost, almost watercolory, like soft edge painting style. Notice how different this is than our spot illustrations right, with their clean outlines. So this is digital painting, not digital coloring. You'll find a lot of past examples in our YouTube channel. And so to approach this, let's go, we're going to be ditching vector entirely for this. This is all raster. I'm going to go right to the modules to just introduce it. And we look at all the different skills we've learned. And that leads us to, in many ways, the most kind of direct type of digital art, which is just mimicking traditional painting using computer tools. So there is a question of the day that I want you to answer in thinking about this project. And it has to do with, with validity and authorship in contemporary art. And I, I ask about art, artificial intelligence as well, because the computer is very good at just using pattern recognition and making things look believable. So for portraiture, it can do this, just sampling from all the photos online. It can create brand new people. This is a, a well-known site called This Person Does Not Exist that I introduced at the beginning of the course. So if it's just about making photo representations of human beings, artificial intelligence does this really well, and it can be used for things like deep fakes and lots of different issues. And this explains how that works. But there's a problem with using AI, and there's a problem with just letting the computer make all the decisions based on previous patterns. So I did a little test using a, uh, a program called Portrait AI. And I started with my photo. And then I, I let it pick some portraits, right? But then I took the portraits that it generated, and then I put it back into the system. So it's a reiterative process. And eventually, slowly, slowly, it turned me into a white woman. And so I wanted to see if it did this with everybody. And so I took Mark Twain, and these are paintings I did of, of uh, Maya Angelou, Mark Twain, William Blake, and Louis Armstrong. And eventually, within four steps of reiterating what they gave you, they turned them into white women. So what does that tell you? Well, it means that most of the images that are being sampled for this AI generator are white women even though in this case they're from paintings. But that means that everything eventually is going to be averaged and pushed towards white women, right? And that's why you need artists to push things into directions where they haven't already gone. And that's the, the importance of communication in visual media. So I don't think that computers are going to take over all, all the things that they're actually capable of taking over because they'll regress everything to just an average which isn't helpful to society. So it's an interesting question of the day to think about, and it especially matters when it talks about digital art, right? About who is the author.
And how much can you use reference? How much can you use these tools? These are ongoing debates. So what I'm teaching you in this project is digital painting. You use reference, and I want everyone to have photo reference for this because I want you to know what you're trying to achieve with your paint. But this will have no compositing in it whatsoever. We are creating everything with our, with our stylus, with our digital paintbrush. And often we'll start with sketching and then build on top of that. But sometimes we can just start with really loose kind of shape-based sketching, what I call speed painting, and then build on top of that. So all you're required to post at the very end is your initial photo reference and then your painting as finished as you were able to make it. Right. So here are some past student examples. And then we get to the project. So the first, the first big problem is figuring out what you want to actually paint, what you want to find reference for. And I decided I want to do something with like an old military portrait. And there are lots of digital artists that have done this before. There's a rich, you know, art history of militarized portraiture. And then these people are just compositing in you know, Steve Jobs' face, Eddie Murphy's face, Bill Murray's face, Robert Downey Jr.'s face, that kind of thing. But I thought I would just take some of the reference for the uniform, because it looks fun to paint, like I like this guy. And it's good if it's one that's, that's actually old and out of copyright. And I could search museum websites for this. But I'm not copying this, I'm just using it as reference. So here we have a lot of these old military ones. These, I like the colors of this one. I might use this. And then, because I'm not compositing with it, I'm just going to do a screen grab. So this was Prince Regent Leopold of Bavaria. Since Bavaria stopped existing after World War One, this is lapsed in copyright. It has been 75 years, even by the latest copyright laws. So I'm going to use this part, but instead of doing just a portrait of this guy, I want to do one of my pet. So I'm going to do a, an amalgam of the two projects. And I'm going to do uh, my dog, Heather. So to collect all my reference in one place, I want to set up. And within that new folder for digital painting, I want to bring in these different screen grabs, this different reference that I got. And I'm going to be combining my dog's head. There's lots of screen grabs with this very Bavarian militarized uniform. So, before I can even sketch this, I need to get a sense of what I want. So I'm going to close my last project, and I'm going to open these small resolution screen grabs in Photoshop. And I'm going to do some compositing. So why am I showing you this? Because you don't need to take whatever your reference is at face value. You can make it into what you want. You now have the compositing skills to do that. Let's make the head a little bit bigger. I like it because the beard of the reference can kind of transition. Let me flip that background. So using Command T and then flip horizontal. No, it doesn't work because the medallions have to go on the other side. So let me instead play with warping it so the shoulders and things kind of fit with my dog's head position. 
work with the proportions. So you can use, you're going to be base, basing this on photo reference, but you can play with your photo reference. I'm going to rasterize it so I can erase away from it. I'm just going to take my lasso and just take big hunks away, giving me lots of overlap, like a really bad compositing job. Because this is just as reference for my digital painting. Red is distracting. Cut that out. Now there are a few different types of digital painting. We're going to be doing kind of a speed painting method. That's what I'm going to show you this time. But you can also do kind of an analytical sketch underneath. I guess I'll show you a little bit of that too. Let me see, is there anything else? But there's also something called rotoscoping. And rotoscoping is what I want you to do sparingly because it doesn't allow you to really show your own choices too much. But rotoscoping is to then do a layer on top of composited layers and just paint on top of that, right? So basically you're painting over photographs. But to do that, you would keep it at very low resolution or you would be taking very low resolution images in this case, making them very high resolution so they would look terrible and you'd be replacing them with your own brush strokes. And that's what a lot of kind of commissioned digital painting work is, especially when it's things like pet portraits or or portraits and avatars for people. But it takes away everything that you can bring to it as a painter and instead relies on the photo or the reference to make all the decisions. So I don't want you to do rotoscoping here. But in some cases, that's a way you can kind of understand how to simplify the process. So if it gets really hard for me to paint the teeth just by observing it in a different file, I could just bring that photo in and then paint over the top of it, as long as that original photo was completely replaced by the end. Okay. But in terms of customizing your, your resources, here I have this different source material, like he's missing an eye here, it's covered by so much fur, so I can bring in the eyes from this reference. I can rasterize it. And so your job is to figure out what you want to paint and then play the different games you need, like I'm doing here, to get your best reference for something you want to build with your digital tools. So to composite that, I'm gonna take the opacity down a little bit, then I'm gonna do Command T and I'm gonna line up the eyes, shrink it down a little. I might have to warp it to match the perspective. And we don't te teach like photo retouching in this beyond composite compositing, right? But that's basically what this process is. I can adjust the colors. Color balance of one photo is a lot warmer than the other. So I can shift that. And I can heighten the contrast all just to get better con better uh, reference for my digital painting. And then when I start the digital painting project, I have good reference already. So even though you have other things going on, you know, it's a busy time, I want you to take the time to find reference that you're excited about doing. And I want him to look like an old grizzled soldier. <laughs> 